The man suddenly unleashed his power, and merged with his armor. He aimed to rescue his girlfriend Helen, who had been captured by the monster. However, the monster didn't care about him at all. It even approached Mike directly. The monster mocked Mike, calling him useless. The monster's saliva splattered onto his face. Mike couldn't take it anymore, and charged at the monster. Everyone thought he was about to unleash his powerful abilities. Unexpectedly, his actions were cringeworthy. After transforming, Mike was instead brutally beaten. Then, the monster swallowed Mike whole. Upon witnessing this scene, Helen was heartbroken. However, at this moment, a blade emerged from the monster's stomach. In the next second, Mike miraculously revived. What on earth was happening? The story traces back tens of thousands of years. There was no human civilization on earth. A group of aliens, calling themselves the Descendants, arrived on earth. They created humanity and conducted genetic experiments on humans. They aimed to create a powerful army of beast warriors. Eventually, the experiments were successful. Since the army needed a leader, they created even more powerful beast gods. However, for unknown reasons, the aliens abruptly evacuated Earth overnight. With their departure, the beast gods became the leaders of the beast army. Moreover, the beast gods continued to use genetic technology to expand their army. But this technology was still immature and too slow. So Kevin, the beast god, teamed up with others to establish the Kronos group. They aimed to improve genetic technology, create more bio-beasts, and realize their ambition to rule the world. During this time, Kevin discovered the alien's discarded armor. This super biomorphic armor was incredibly powerful. While it was just ordinary protective gear for aliens, it greatly enhanced human strength. Transforming into cape, not only increased his strength by hundreds of times, but also greatly improved his defense. Kevin wanted to put on the armor, as soon as he got it. However, he tried many methods, but the armor remained unresponsive. Dr. Albert was a researcher in the group, but he did not want Kevin to rule the world at all. If Kevin truly wore the biomorphic armor, the world would surely face catastrophic disaster. So, to stop Kevin, the doctor stole the armor from the group. He had already contacted the CIA, and they sent him a contact person. They were scheduled to meet tonight. However, before the doctor could meet the contact, he was discovered by pursuers. They snatched the items back. Then, they stated that they hoped the doctor would return and apologize to Kevin. Otherwise, he would not see the sun tomorrow. But the doctor unexpectedly transformed. He was unwilling to cooperate with them at all. Dean looked at the transformed doctor, and they were completely unfazed, because they had also undergone genetic modification, and they were combat-type bio-beasts. They then transformed, and fought the doctor. The doctor was killed. Afterward, they returned to the group with the box. Kevin was very pleased to see the biomorphic armor. He opened the box immediately. However, Kevin's expression changed the instant he opened the box, because inside the box was not the biomorphic armor, but a toaster. Kevin looked at his subordinate and unleashed his power to punish Dean. The beast god could control bio-beasts with his mind, so Kevin could decide Dean's life or death. Dean screamed in pain, and when he heard Dean promise to bring back the armor, Kevin finally stopped and ceased torturing him. Meanwhile, CIA agent Hunter arrived at a Taekwondo dojo. He found the doctor's daughter Helen. He informed her of her father's death. After hearing this, Helen was heartbroken. She asked Hunter how her father had died. Hunter recounted the events that led to it. It turned out that he was the doctor's contact person. However, when he arrived at the agreed meeting place, he found that the doctor was already dead. After hearing this, Helen asked Hunter to take her to the scene. She wanted to bring her father's body back. At this moment, Mike happened to pass by. He saw Helen crying sadly. Mike decided to follow them to find out what had happened. Upon arriving at the destination, Mike hid behind a wall. He accidentally spotted a box. Inside the box was the biomorphic armor, hidden by the doctor. Though he didn't know what it was, Mike still stuffed it into his bag. What he didn't know was that this item would completely change his fate. He watched as Helen walked away. Mike also decided to ride his motorcycle home, but it wouldn't start. That wasn't the worst part. Mike's enemies had spotted him. They kicked Mike's motorcycle over. They had often bullied Mike before, but the situation was different now. Mike had already learned Taekwondo, and he believed he could take them on. 
So, Mike charged in to fight several of them, but he clearly overestimated his abilities. His moves were basic, and Mike gradually found himself at a disadvantage. They were too harsh, and the armor in his backpack was knocked out. Mike intended to escape in the chaos, but a thug noticed him and kicked him. Mike's head hit the armor. By coincidence, he activated the armor. In the next second, The thugs thought Mike was just trying to show off. One of them charged at him with a clenched fist. However, transformed into cape, Mike was incredibly powerful. With a simple flick, he sent him flying. The others saw that. Mike had become stronger and suggested. They attacked together. But they were easily defeated by Mike. As several people found Mike difficult to deal with. One even pulled out a gun and shot at him. But Mike had become invulnerable to knives and bullets. He was furious and prepared to teach the shooter a lesson. But the opponent grabbed a lid to block. At this moment, Mike looked at his current appearance. He couldn't stand seeing his handsome face look so ugly. While Mike was stunned, the thugs were scared and fled. Mike tried to take off the armor, but it had already fused with him. In fact, removing the armor was very simple. As long as he focused, the armor would retract on its own. Meanwhile, Dean was still searching the streets, but he found nothing after a long time. He thought about how he would die if he couldn't find the armor. Suddenly, Dean came up with a plan. He remembered that the doctor had a daughter and that the armor might be with her. Then, Dean went to Helen's house and kidnapped her. Coincidentally, Mike happened to be looking for Helen, but he glanced at the sack and didn't think much of it. Then, Mike happily went upstairs when he pushed the door open and saw the mess in Helen's house. Mike immediately realized something was wrong, so he hurriedly ran downstairs. Soon, he confirmed that Helen was in the sack. To rescue Helen, Mike grabbed a bottle and smashed it down. Seeing someone daring to disrupt his plans, Dean stepped forward to teach Mike a lesson. Fortunately, Hunter arrived in time with his gun. The two rescued Helen. Then, realizing the vast power difference, they seized the opportunity to turn and run. Dean saw Helen escape and quickly took a few people to chase after her. To catch up with them, Ian transformed into a bio-beast. The three realized they couldn't keep running, and hid inside an abandoned warehouse. Dean and his group also followed them into the warehouse. To find the three, they all transformed into bio-beasts. One of the bio-beasts had a keen sense of smell, and successfully located the three. Seeing the bio beast discover them, Hunter immediately shielded the two behind him, but the bio beast's target wasn't him. After knocking Hunter down, they prepared to take Helen away. Mike began to show his basic moves, but it was clear he could only watch as Helen was captured. At this moment, fearing Dean would make another mistake, Kevin sent two more bio beasts to help. They believed the biomorphic armor was with Helen, so he pressured her to reveal where she had hidden the armor. Mike watched as Helen was bullied, and he was extremely angry. In the next second, I am the Giver. Mike instantly transformed. The bio beasts were momentarily stunned, but they had never seen Kate before, and they thought Mike was just bluffing. So, David prepared to challenge Mike's strength, but as soon as he charged, he was thrown back. The other bio beasts decided to work together to subdue Mike, but Kate's abilities were stronger than theirs, so they couldn't defeat Mike at all. David planned to sneak attack, but the weapon he threw hit a teammate instead. With David's interference, the other bio beasts suffered heavy casualties. Dean decided to show his true strength and charged at Mike for a direct fight. The battle between the two was incredibly fierce. However, during the fight, Dean discovered Cape's weakness. If the energy sphere on Cape's head was damaged, his energy would disappear. Then, Dean informed the others of Cape's weakness. Two bio beasts restrained Mike after hearing this. Then, Dean struck the energy sphere, causing the armor's energy to dissipate. Mike collapsed to the ground instantly, seizing the opportunity. Dean took out the energy sphere. Mike gradually died, and in the end, he turned into a puddle of water. Immediately afterward, Dean brought Helen and Hunter back to the group. Upon hearing that, Mike had activated the armor. Kevin excitedly asked Helen how he transformed. Helen said nothing. Kevin took her to the lab, where there were people undergoing genetic modifications. Kevin told Helen to obey him, or he would turn her into a bio-beast. 
After all, Hunter was already undergoing modification, but Helen had no idea what he meant by the activation method. To figure out what Kevin was talking about, Helen asked him to take her to see the energy sphere. Kevin thought she had compromised, so he agreed. Then, they arrived at the damaged energy sphere. Upon seeing the energy sphere, Helen felt very sad. She remembered that Mike had died because of her. She wanted to reach for the energy sphere, but Kevin quickly pulled her back. At this moment, a researcher informed Kevin that the energy sphere was strange because it was self-repairing. The biomorphic armor was a composite of organic and inorganic materials. As long as this energy sphere remained, the biomorphic armor would automatically repair itself. Soon, it would return to its original form. Hearing that he would soon be able to transform into cape, Kevin was very excited. Now that he had the armor, Kevin still didn't know the activation method. Helen remained silent. Kevin decided to turn her into a bio-beast, as he could dictate her life or death with his mind. However, before Kevin could act, Helen suddenly launched an attack. Everyone around was shocked. Then, Helen grabbed a stick and smashed the glass. After taking out the energy sphere, she prepared to escape. But this was Kevin's territory, and with those bio-beasts around, she couldn't escape at all. Even in this situation, Helen understood that Kevin absolutely could not get the armor. So, she ran to the shredder, ready to destroy the energy sphere. However, when she was about to throw it in, the energy sphere stuck to her hand and wouldn't come off. The bio-beasts rushed forward, preparing to snatch the armor from her. But where David was, there were no surprises. He directly knocked the energy sphere away. In the next second, <laughs> Dean tried to take the sphere out of his mouth, but it had gone into his stomach. Suddenly, the bio-beast that swallowed the energy sphere collapsed to the ground. At this moment, his stomach felt like it was being pierced by needles. The bio-beast screamed in pain. The energy sphere frantically absorbed its energy. Everyone was at a loss. At this moment, the bio-beast was cut open by a sharp blade. Then, Mike transformed into cape and revived. As previously mentioned, the biomorphic armor had completely merged with Mike. As long as the armor returned to its original state, Mike would also be revived. Moreover, after this incident, the revived Mike possessed even greater power. He had completely mastered the armor, so Kevin could no longer use the biomorphic armor. Then, Mike rescued Hunter. The surrounding bio-beasts moved in to stop him. For Mike now, these bio-beasts were no match for him. Helen prepared to take Hunter and leave, but she was spotted by the bio-beasts. Fortunately, Mike arrived just in time to help. At this moment, Dean charged in. Since he had previously defeated Mike, he confidently waited until the end to make his appearance. But Mike defeated him with just three moves. The three continued to flee. However, just as they reached the exit, Hunter suddenly screamed and collapsed. His body began to grow claws. It turned out that Hunter's genetic modification was only halfway through so his body had partially mutated. But this bio-beast was a deformity, and had no combat ability. It typically wouldn't survive for long. As expected, Hunter soon died completely. Mike watched the scene, feeling extremely heartbroken. At this moment, Kevin approached, holding Helen hostage. He looked at the powerful cape, and Kevin was very pleased. He wanted to put on the armor. Kevin urged Mike to hand over the armor, offering a lot of money. He also promised to release Helen, but Mike understood that. Kevin was treacherous and sinister. He couldn't give the armor to him. Then, Mike kicked Kevin away. He thought the crisis had been averted. Suddenly, there was a strange noise ahead. Mike cautiously looked ahead. In the next second, as the beast god, Kevin transformed and grew to a massive size. Faced with such a giant beast, Mike could only evade. Then, Kevin began to taunt Mike. Mike hurriedly climbed to a higher position, and jumped onto Kevin's back, choking him. Kevin threw him off. Then, Mike was pinned against the wall. Kevin extended his tongue to take the energy sphere. But, unexpectedly, his actions provoked the armor to unleash its deadly move. Before Kevin could react, he was blasted away by Cape's particle cannon. Kevin was blown apart. At this moment, Helen came to Mike's side. She thought Mike would never return to his original form. Helen expressed that. He didn't care about his appearance. But Mike suddenly transformed back into a human. 
At this moment, he finally earned Helen's recognition, but had the crisis really been completely averted? In the corner, David surprisingly survived until the end, and standing next to him was, the powerful beast god General Boss. So, Cape and the Bio Beasts would encounter each other again. The film ends here. The movie is adapted from, the work of Japanese manga artist Ryoki Takahashi. The film was released over 30 years ago, however, the special effects in the film are superb. The concepts presented are also quite interesting. Elements like human origins and alien life are blended together, including the genetic modification technology proposed within. These technologies are very cutting edge. It can be said that they are timeless classics. However, many manga fans believe that the film differs somewhat from the manga. They feel that Hollywood failed to capture the essence of the manga. This could be a matter of cultural differences. It may also be that the live action suits limited the actors' performances. Moreover, Cape's ultimate move is just a particle cannon, which is quite underwhelming. But overall, it is still a good film. If you enjoyed my commentary, please subscribe to my channel. Your support is the greatest encouragement for me.